So like we have these spaghetti jars and I'm like I can make another type of light out of that. The problem is the the mouth of the jar is too narrow for a artificial candle so we have to come up with a solution for that. But I'm going to show you that I like to put some I say some wooden pieces around here to create kind of a gothic effect and let's see what we can use. So what I found was these bamboo skewers and they're flat. You can see that one side is flat. And what I did was I took eight of them and I just painted them with acrylic paint. And we're going to measure the size of the jars area from here to here. And then we're going to just cut them with a cutter. So what I did was I measured with a permanent magic marker two parts. So I measured out what they were. So what I need to do now is I just need to cut them. This. One easy snip. Bam. Got it. Two easy snips. Bam. Got it. And now, once you get that, you can measure out the size of the jar. So we're going to put eight of these around here. That's going to look really cool. Very important to, to note is that you need to paint on both sides because you can look through the jar and you're going to be saying, oh, that's a wooden, wooden skewer. So we want to make sure all of these are done. So this only took about three minutes. Just paint them up and let them dry. Okay, so now what I did was I found the original line of where the two parts of the bottle had come together and I had hot glued my first little bamboo skewer on, got on the other side over here, did the exact same thing, found the exact line where the two parts of the bottle were made and then hot glued my second bamboo skewer and then marked off the halfway point between this one and this one and then two more points. So it's 12, 6, 3, and 9 on the clock, and then I had marked all the way around it so we know exactly where the rest of our little skewers are going to go. And once you get all of your bamboo skewers in the right places, let's start on the arches. The first thing in doing an arch is to use a permanent magic marker and start mapping out each area where you want your arch to go. I would have it touch the top and a little bit down below. Don't worry about them being absolutely perfect because we want that antique crafted look to them. Once we map out each arch, we get to build up the top part. Okay, now what I had done was I also did the bottom part too, just very roughly mapping out where we'd want the bottom part of these. So every one of these are going to become a window, kind of like a, a church, church style window. Don't worry about the hot glue, don't worry about the, the glue marks, whatever. Leave all that stuff on there. See, there's some stuff from the, the uh, previous label from the spaghetti jar, whatever. Leave that stuff on there. You know, all this stuff adds to the project. Actually, in fact, I use a lot of techniques to actually dirty up my projects to make them look older and more antique -y. In this case, leave that stuff on there. If it bothers you, take it off. But in my case, the more uh, it, the more roughed up it looks, the better it is. Today I'm using Fila Air Clay as a soft prop maker. I use it practically in every single project I do. And we want to start now forming and shaping the base part. We want to actually cement in, if you can see that, we want to cement in the bamboo skewers into our project. So this is the beginning of the cementing part. We just want to create and go along the edge of the arches. Okay. 
later we can actually add something right there if we wanted to. Just go with your convictions on this. And we're doing the top part too. And then when it's done, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so once you get all of the clay on the bottom, I'm leaving my knife in rough like this. I'm not smoothing it out whatsoever because I want that texture. If you really wanted to add something special to this, making sure that the clay is now being dragged up into each and every one of the bamboo skewers so it's like a connective piece as it's been poured or something but i would then take a, a blunt instrument and you can actually take and make a pattern on here and i'm going to show you what that's going to look like here. using a instrument like this and you can actually make some divots into the clay and what this is going to do is it's going to add a great texture when you apply the antiquing and the aging process so i'm going to do that to the complete surface of our jar and then i'm going to let this dry for 24 hours okay so once you get all of your clay on there and it's dry you can now start on the second one. We're going to do the same exact process we did down here. Up here, I'm going to coat the whole entire jar for aesthetics reasons, and let's do that. Now, if you run out of any particular color clay, like in this case, I used the white, but I'm going to be using maybe like a yellow or another type of clay, it doesn't matter because you're going to be painting it black. Okay, so let's do that. Wow, and this came out really nice. This is all solid now. So now we're going to be using an alpha acrylic 999 black and let's paint all of this in. This starts to becoming a really part of the cool process over here. Now we have the stippling over here done. What we're going to do is we're going to repaint this again. But as you can see, there's a lot of white on the inside. So we get to paint all of that inside there very easily. And then I had found this. This is a instant rice bowl as a base. Look how perfectly that fits on there. That's going to look really cool when those two are put together. And then I've also did this pre to show you what we're going to be building. We're going to be building the tower. Now that is an orange juice top of a bottle from a Minute Maid. And I cut that off and I sprayed it black. That goes right inside there. So look at that. We're going to be putting all these together and building the, the top turret. First thing we need to do is we've got to get our hot glue gun up and cooking over here and putting these pieces together. If you're wondering what this is, it's nothing more than a ping pong ball and it fit really nicely in there. And I'm going to be taking this plastic piece off. So let's do all of that right now. Okay, once you get that all nice and hot, apply a very generous amount of hot glue to your ring over here okay and then try to center this the best that you can this is going to take this is the hardest part here is the centering because it's I've done several several of them and they don't always hey that went on there very nicely look at that all right okay now we got it hey there we go all right, put that aside. Now I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the, uh, the ball in there too. Right now, this is gonna be a real tall one. Boom! There it is. Okay, we're gonna put that aside and let that cool. You got your hot glue out. Put a generous amount on the base of whatever you're working on with I just just so happened to find this really nice rice cup bowl and just glue that right on there meld those two together ooh I can feel the hot glue meld right on there there they are we have got a lot of painting to do so we need to paint the in interior the exterior and our turret so let's do all of that now okay our base and our turret is still wet 
So right now, we're just going to let this dry. You can see I, I just went very, very roughly over everything. Because we're going to actually add some more detail. We need to put some feel of clay around here. We're going to add the top. This piece goes beautifully on top of this one, but we got to add a lot, a lot of detailing. We're going to do this Victorian style, Gothic Victorian style. Okay, and this gets better and better. I got my coffee over here. Mm. Nothing like a nice hot cup of coffee to make out your stuff here. All right, so our little turret's done. Look at that. And then our lantern is done over here. Look what I found at the dollar store. All of these stick-on pieces. We can line the bottom down here with emblems, paint them over black. But that's not what we're going to do a little bit later. We're going to actually work today using our feel of clay. I'm going to create a molding around the base here. And I'm going to add some more textures and things to our turret. So uh, let's start creating some rolls of clay and start wrapping that around us. This is in blue. We're going to paint over it in black. Okay, so what we have done here is I created the same stippling that is on the surface over here so that the turret and the, the base match. And then I also put this really heavy ring on there. I'm going to be using one of my tools to create a design that will blend that right in following the same type of dots that we've been using. These kind of pushy dots that get pushed in here. There are so many things that you can do and don't worry about anything being how do you say abnormal or out of place or something like that because it, cre it creates more an illusion of being homemade, you know, cast, you know, one of a kind. So that's what we really like, really like that look. And look at that. Okay, so we're going to let these dry now for 24 hours. So after looking at all the different types of stickers and things I had, I had chosen these beads right here. We're going to put them right in every single one of our squares that are on here. So I'm going to use a white glue and I'm going to stick those on there. I'm going to finish that off and I'll show you what it's going to look like. Yeah, as you can see, I put the, the little uh, half balls on there, and they're going to be painted black. So let's let the, all of this dry, and let's paint this over. So what we did here, we put the half beadings over here, and then I also put some on top of here. And I also matched the stippling to this pattern right here. So now that they're both dry after 24 hours, let's paint them black. Okay, now you can see what all this is looking like. We've got all the pieces all painted up beautifully in black and let's get out our hot glue gun and add more detail right now I got my glue gun heating up but I wanted to show you something this is from a previous lantern I had done and you can see how I had created with the hot glue gun lines and decorations on here we're gonna do the same on this lantern okay, once you got your hot glue gun up and working. It's a nice steady stream. We are going to add some more detailing to here. I'm going to make some curves starting right here up over there like this on each and every one of our sides. Don't be afraid. Layer it on. Don't be afraid that it's it's not exactly perfect or anything because it adds to the gothic look. You can see I'm going to be doing this. And this is not easy. This is not, this is not an easy aspect. I actually had penciled it out first before I did it with the black per permanent magic marker. I think this is my last one. Okay. I'm going to add some more detailing here. I'm going to add a line down here, down here. Don't worry about the spider webbing. If you have that from your hot glue gun, don't worry about it. It adds an aesthetic look. Okay, now I'm going to do a base piece. You hear my neighbor's dog over there barking. Adds more aesthetic to my work. Barkity bark.
That's awesome. Okay, and let's let this cool. Okay, so I took a moment out and I went crazy. I just went over everything here with the glue gun. I added lines to everything top and bottom also on this piece too I did all this down here with detailing don't worry about the, the spider webbing on there it adds to the aesthetics and actually I love it the more kind of I say um, dots and dashes you got on there the better it's gonna look so what we're now going to do is we're going to let this dry then we're gonna do the final coat of black paint over this and then we're gonna start working into the silver okay, and the final area that we get to do today. This here is using an acrylic. I'm using a silver and 995 and we just want to get some silver out. Over here we want to get some silver out and you can use all different types of formats of silver and I'm using a soft watercolor brush today and I really want it to just be soft enough just to touch the surface areas. I want you to show what I'm going to be doing like this. Very, very, very lightly. You just touch over and everything just pops. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Like this. Crisscross pattern of brushing. in a little bit more. Don't be afraid to put it on there. Don't put too much on. Very, very, very nice. Here, same. Right over. Right over. Look at look at that. How all that just pops right out. Okay. You can see how that stands out. I got the light on so you can Get a better view. Okay, and let's finish this. We're going to do the whole entire piece and then see what it looks like when we're done. So now let's look at the finished product with the silver on it, but we are not done yet. So let's see what these look like when they're assembled. Okay, so now this is what the lantern would look like once you get it all assembled but what is missing down below yes the candle so let's design that now we need to address a few things first of all you can you cannot put a real candle in any of these lanterns so you must use battery operated candles and they they look beautiful i mean they absolutely have that realistic glow to them this one too you can see the reflected look at it in the glass that's it, it just the problem is that this larger candle will not fit inside of our opening however here at the prop shop we have all kinds of solutions to that now we're going to take this little miniature candle and we could just put it down the base but that's not going to look good because this is what we're after this size and whatever so what we're going to do is we're going to build here at the prop shop we're going to build a larger uh, candle outside and we're going to also have a little secret area where we can put our finger in there and turn that switch on and be able to take that candle out anytime we want so let's make a new candle for our lantern build our extension candle down below we're going to need one of our battery operated candles i'm also using today a toilet paper roll and some air dry feel of clay it doesn't matter what color because we're going to paint that up later and a pair of scissors so what we're going to do today is we're going to cut first of all our paper tube to create boom a much larger thicker piece and we're going to build today up the clay up and around to settle that in there but what we want is we want a doorway we're going to cut a nice door out of here no one is ever going to see the back of the candle so 
we're going to cut a door like this so we can stick our finger inside the can candle mysteriously when we need to and then we can take it out so let's see if the size is correct I'm going to check the length and see what size we need for this to sit in there and let's build it okay so what we did was now we had checked the size of the candle that we need to put inside of our piece that's about right there and then what we're going to do now is we're going to use a little bit of the base now to make a supporter so what I did was I cut a piece off and now I have a supporting ring to set that in there and our candle will fit right in here so now let's start using our clay and building up the candle put a nice big glop in there and hopefully that's going to just snuggle its way in oh yeah so nice and making sure that the battery is very very uh, the battery switch is very very easy to turn on and off once we get that candle and we're going to use a little bit more of this clay over here we are going to completely create an artificial candle now we're going to use the clay to coat all of the cardboard and create some drips on there and then we're going to let this dry for 24 hours and then we're going to paint it so let's do that right now check this out now we got this little guy glowing over here we've got our candle created I've got to put some more clay on this over here because I just ran out any old color will do as long as that's going to look really cool in there but once we get that artificial candle created made we're going to smooth this out because we want it to be nice and smooth and build up a lip over here and put we can even put some drips on here with our glue gun if we wanted to and then we're going to paint this the correct candle color so it how do you say it will blend in without taking away from our design so let's put the extra clay on there and then once we do this let this dry for 24 hours and then we're going to paint it it's 24 hours later our clay is dried we even have cracks in it this time no problem don't worry about that because no one's going to see it because this will be inside of the lantern we are using a mixture today of well, about 10 parts white to about one part permanent yellow deep and we're going to mix this in to make a vanilla color for our candle and we're going to absolutely do the best job that we can you want to use as little of the yellow as possible and do a really good blending job if you ever eat vanilla ice cream you know what this color is going to look like because I really want it to look like beeswax I think I've hit it already you want to blend it in really nicely oh yeah there it is okay and that's a nice that is a really thick consistency and this is going to fill in all the cracks and everything that are in the candle so we're going to layer this on and once I get this completely painted, I'll show you what it's going to look like. Once you get your candle completely painted up, let it dry thoroughly and then we'll assemble it into our lantern. Once the candle is completely coated, and we've turned it on. Let's turn it off and then let's assemble it into our lantern.